Argonaut to begin our walk through old gas town this evening. You would all follow me. This way. Hi, I'm Rowan Jang by day. I'm a storyteller with Forbidden Vancouver Walking Tours. By night, I am George Turrell, born Windsor, Ontario, 1855. 1886, the year the city of Vancouver's incorporation. 26 years before that building was built stood right here, my blacksmith shop. I remember it well, the furnace, right where you're standing, sir. And here, the tool bench. And here, the anvil, imported from Edinburgh, Scotland. Lost Souls of Gastown is the only tour that uh, Forbidden Vancouver has that is part theater piece. So it's actually, uh, yeah, it's, it's part theater piece, part walking tour. I would say it's even more theater piece than walking tour. Um, but Lost Souls of Gastown is a special case, and it's my favorite one to do because I started in acting, because it's the, the one that has the theatrical element of it. One minute, there's a bit of smoke in the distance. The next, Joe and I are running full tilt down Water Street. Joe's a quick runner, but I can run too when there's a fire licking the skin off my back. Buildings weren't going up in flames, they were exploding. The nails and the sidewalk planks were heating up and popping like pistol shots around us. And when it reached the gun store, 10,000 rounds of ammunition exploded at once. I remember my ears ringing in my head. We hung a left down Carroll Street, and we dived out into that dock. On the dock, there were policemen, arm in arm. Behind them were firemen with hoses primed. Behind them, a mob. 200 men. No one from Victoria was getting off that ship. Well, Captain Rudland was dissuaded from docking his vessel. Sailed it further up the Burrard Inlet. Docked the Hastings town site. And they did nothing to stop him. By July 23rd, smallpox in Vancouver. What location do I find the most interesting and why? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I like the location we're in right now. This is the alleyway where the Alhambra Hotel used to, to stand. And I find it interesting because of the story associated with it. Uh, it's a story about loss. It's a, a story of smallpox. But Mr. Hackman, he knew it immediately. He saw the beads on her skin running down her neck. And he wrapped his hands and face in linen. He didn't want smallpox. Then he grabbed Elsie, he dragged her down here to this storeroom, he threw her in, slammed the door, and then he nailed a piece of yellow cloth to the wall. That was the sign, yellow. Quarantine for smallpox. You can still see the mark where he drove the nail in. I was working my usual shift in my shop when Mr. Hackman walked in. He told me that Elsie had smallpox and that she was waiting for the wagon to Dead Man's Island. How did I get into this in the first place? Uh, well, it started, I was actually, I went to theater school, so I went to uh, school for the performing arts, but then uh, I always had history as a second passion, like it was always the thing, full disclosure, I wasn't very good in school, in high school, but uh, history was one subject I did well at, and I always had a passion for it, and uh, also my family in Vancouver has a rich history going back many, many generations. My great-great-aunt Isabel was a celebrated vaudeville theater actress. She performed at the Pantages Theater on West Hastings in the 1920s with her musical comedy troupe, The Speeders. And my grandfather emigrated here from China, from Hong Kong in 1950. So the story of Vancouver, it's the story of where I come from. I have deep roots here. And uh, I found this posting, because I was looking actually for theater jobs at first, but I found this as sort of an almost full-time job. And I thought, well, that really sort of perfectly combines the two things I love doing the most. And uh, I was lucky enough to get the job. They, they are very, uh, they're very uh, specific in what they like and the sort of skills they have in their storytellers. But um, I couldn't be happier. I've worked here for over a year now at Forbidden Vancouver, and I couldn't be happier. As the night wore on, the three of us became increasingly enthusiastic. We were going to form a team, head north to the Klondike together, find a great fortune. The plan was to meet on Cordova at 11 the next morning to get out there. Uh, what I enjoy most about leading this tour is the audience. 
you know, nine out of ten times, probably 99 out of a hundred times the audiences I get are so into it and so enthusiastic and I get a very good mix of tourists and locals depending on the season. Um, but they really make it a joy. You know, I've always loved people and talking to people and entertaining people. And the challenge I found with this was embodying the character of George Turrell, but still leaving room to laugh and joke with the audience, to, to, to throw some modern jokes and references in there every now and then. In June time that year, my Elsie was out of town, visiting her mother in Victoria. Much as I loved my dear mother-in-law, I decided against making this particular trip to spend days in close confinement with her and her four cats. <laughs> I love the, how much people learn. You know, people come away saying they, they never realized uh, what a rich and sometimes dark history Vancouver has. There's a lot of scandalous things that went on in Vancouver's past and uh, we touch on that in Lost Souls of Gastown and in the Forbidden Tour as well. We go later into the 1920s and Vancouver is a really, it's a young city but it's a really fascinating one and I love sharing it, the history of it with people from all over the world.